All right, we are live. Welcome to Kai Talks. We have a wonderful gentleman with us all the way from New Delhi. We have Raman Raheja. He's the co-owner and CEO of the Legends League Cricket. I uh, have had a fantastic season uh, just completed uh, late last year. We'll talk about that in a bit. Raman, um, fantastic to have you uh, with us. Appreciate you taking the time. Good to be here with you, Arup. So, um uh, so our audience is is very much uh, sports business centric uh, and and we talk about journeys in sport and and your journey has been an awesome one i've been following uh, it on linkedin and and a lot of the things that you're doing currently but i want to start a little bit in the beginning uh, i mean uh, i know you've uh, you've studied at symbiosis but even prior to that uh, you've you've been uh, fashion uh, uh, i mean you've studied fashion design tell us a little bit about that sort of journey uh, and and then how you kind of jumped into sport i know you've spent some time at wiscraft as well so yeah uh, maybe maybe start early and then we can kind of segue to uh, the legends league sure so varup uh, actually uh, early days in my college life i realized that i had this knack towards creativity and i felt at that time it was uh, design towards fashion so i just kind of moved into that space i did my nift uh, yep. then i started my uh, career in the fashion industry early uh, interned with some of the top designers rohit bal and etc etc uh, started my own label as well okay uh, but uh, that was not my calling you know so some time during that course of the first year itself i realized that i like to be behind the scenes than be uh, in front of the scenes so when i said behind scenes we used to do a lot of fashion shows right uh, so i used to be happy doing the production behind the screen uh, behind the thing you know so that was more like my calling yeah i realized that and uh, immediately thereafter i quit fashion I, and i joined the event industry in 1996 itself okay. so michael jackson came to india it was oh, one of amazing the projects so oh, wow. uh, it was part of the history tour uh, oh. uh so I, that was early days at wiscraft in fact uh, i was one of the first generation of the wiscraft school of event management in the right. country uh, so i started there and uh, that was when uh, 96 till 2013 it has been event management you know so okay. for about good uh, you know 17 odd years it was event industry did Amazing. some of the biggest events that the country had seen whether it was the first ifa i was the founding team of ifa awards i've done six seven ifas uh, did the commonwealth games the opening ceremony i was the head producer of that uh, but i always like content Okay. Uh, and packaging content and selling it you know so that's been my skill set you know selling content uh, so that's 2010 commonwealth games probably gave me the first look at sports industry and okay. i felt that such big infrastructure was being created huge following of the yeah. Yeah. Uh, non cricket fans so i felt that there was an opportunity yeah and uh, uh during that stint after 2010 i did a few kabaddi things with the government of punjab right. i thought that kabaddi was a big sport mm-hmm. and uh, rest is history i started the kabaddi league uh, yeah. i was yeah. there uh, so that was when i moved from the entertainment industry to the sports industry but for me the change wasn't the industry it was content industry you know so right. from entertainment content i moved into sports content right. basically i am not a sports expert Mm-hmm. but i'm a fan i like following multiple sports of course cricket has been my favorite but uh, i saw that packaging sports in a way that it can be programmed and positioned at a 9 pm prime time slot on television there will be a lot of takers yeah and you've yep. seen that with with kabaddi and with so many other things thereafter so that's how i moved from one side of the content industry to the other side i still feel that i'm still in the same industry which is content <laughs> but having said that of course people view it from entertainment into sports uh, yeah. i'm very glad that i moved in at that time when it was re- actually evolving so after my early days at kabaddi you know it was it took off very well i started a sports uh, content company 
In fact, we set up the first sports radio of India, 24-7. Yeah, I mean, I, I was reading that and it's really, really interesting. I'd love for you to, I mean, dive into some details there. Yeah, yeah you know, so uh, as we see 130 crore population, but not a single 24-7 sports radio. I saw that yeah. as an opportunity. Amazing. Across the world, biggest consumption on sports used to happen, especially in the Western world, it still yes. continues to happen on, on radio. Yep. which is, uh, you know, live or or broadcast and all of a lot of that. But in India, uh, probably the law did not allow the FM radios to be doing 24-7 sports. So I went into the digital space. We acquired some live streaming content uh, rights of uh, uh, cricket, BCCI and stuff and, and you Excellent. know, made it big. In fact, at one point of time, Arup, we became the world's biggest sports radio in terms of... Wow viewer audience all that you know so we beat the bbc we beat the Amazing. top sport we beat the espn and the us you know in terms of the following and all of that so that was great uh, you know that was probably one of my first ventures as an entrepreneur in the sports business uh, we raised mm -hmm. a few uh, investments out of foreign funds and all of that so some very interesting journey that happened but unfortunately covid hit and this yeah. business was more capital intensive in terms of acquisition of rights. Right. I still feel audio has a huge opportunity, but uh, I realized that I would need a bigger player to partner with me. So I uh, sold that to ITV Networks, which is the News X guys and the right. Indian News guys. So they acquired the property. I still have a little bit of a stake there, but uh, they kind of drove uh, it further. Uh, I moved out and I started looking around at I, I was exploring ways and means of moving into the sports business uh, per se, yeah. gaming and all of that. But then uh, after having done a, one successful sports league, I saw that, of course, cricket is a religion in our country. Of course. And, and the entry point in the business of cricket has been only about IPL. That's yes. the only space where, where private investments have been. And that's too very restrictive. Mm -hmm. Only players at that time with the franchise and the prices were too high. So I was exploring that what can be other opportunity around the business of cricket. I saw that uh, uh, opportunity coming in the masters or the legend space. Mm -hmm. And uh, 21, we felt that it was the right time. The product which we had was something which I won't say I invented it. It, it has been done in the past by people. Uh, Sachin Shane tried that in 2015 right. uh, in US. Uh, somebody else tried in 2016 in, in Middle East. But probably, as I said, packaging. The content packaging is something that I felt. You know, So for me, I was not carrying the baggage of a sports person mm -hmm. or a sports business person at that right. time. Right. Uh, and I thought it very differently. And uh, we set up the Legends League cricket uh, in a very different way. Uh, did not go the franchise route straight away. Yeah. Uh, I'm not, I, I realized that it was not just the product that I'll have to build. I also have to build the category. And that mm -hmm. is where my journey is, you know. So we are currently in that phase where we're not only building the product, but also the category. So that's yeah. the yeah. Uh, long and short of my uh, career paths to Legends League. Amazing, amazing. Um, did I know you call yourself a sports friend uh, on, on, on multiple platforms. Did did you always know you were going to be an entrepreneur? Did you know that you were going to kind of do it on your own? Or, or it, it kind of came about at uh, at the point where you just mentioned where uh, you had to jump from uh, the radio and figure... Fig and and I mean, tell us a little bit about that thought process and how you kind of uh, realized... Yeah, so so I, I feel that entrepreneur is something which is within everyone. You know, it is not something that people realize. Uh, it's... Uh, uh, it's about completing a particular task within the resources and the environment that you're in. So uh, we, I call it intrapreneurs when you're in a job, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, as, as the uh, marketing and the ma management language would say it. And companies love to groom side. Companies would yeah. love to groom the intrapreneurs, you know, so SPO heads and you know, all of that. So I knew from day one that that is something that I would like to pursue given a right time in my career. Uh, and uh, we we uh, did uh, get a chance and opportunity during my event management journey as well as then later thereafter after my kabaddi thing. So uh, it was always within me that I would like to do things uh, in a in a certain way. 
and within my uh, resources. Uh, not that I would not like to be bossed around. It was not coming out of that. You know, so a lot of people uh, <laughs> yeah, feel yeah. that they would like to jump on being an entrepreneur uh, because they would like to be their own boss. It's not about that. You know, it's always mm -hmm. good. Even while being an entrepreneur, I have had uh, mentors around me. I have had yeah. uh, guides around me. So you know, you take advice, and and that's what a boss is always uh, uh, you know mm -hmm. do. You know, even in an employment uh, scenario. So I've kind of take, taken it uh, that uh, being an entrepreneur is not going to be just like for the reasons of uh, my own thing, but also about building a particular platform where I can cultivate more such thinkers and more yeah. such leaders within my space. You know, So that's been one of my thought process, which I'm carrying on, and I would like to build it uh, like that. Amazing. Amazing. Um. Jumping into, I know there's a lot to talk about in relation to the Legends League um, cricket and tell us a little bit about the last season uh, and, and maybe how did you change anything from, uh, from the earlier ones and, 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 and I know there's been uh, some fantastic reach across digital, across uh, platforms. Uh, I, what, what did you see happen different? Of course, there was a huge uh, uh, wave that you were riding, which was the World Cup as well, which is fantastic. I think that worked really, really, really well. But in any case, uh, I feel like people weren't uh, fed up of sort of consuming cricket. As you said, it's it's it's, it's a religion and, and, and people kind of continue to watch. So tell us a little bit about the season, how did it go? Uh, and and I'll I'll ask a few questions on on so even the sponsorship side. I I saw the fantastic work in terms of the trophy tour and things like that. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, let me just jump, tell you a little right about in. how this journey started. Actually, you know, so Legends League cricket started uh, two years back. Uh, yeah. You know, and we uh, had our first season in Oman. The as I mentioned earlier that I did not take the route of a franchise, you know, like everybody mm. thinks so. Well, start a league, go straight into a franchise model, get right. some franchise on right. board, uh, and there you go. But I did not do that. Essentially, we we set up the LLC Masters in Oman with yeah. three teams, India, Asia, World. So basically, what we've been trying to do is we're trying to build the category where we are mirroring the active cricket space into a legend space. So cricket is played in two forms. Cricket is played either uh, when players play for the country or the players play for the club. So we do the yep. same thing in the legend space. So we have two formats, LLC Masters, where the players play for the country. Yep. And then you have the Legends League Cricket franchise model where the players play for the clubs. So we yep. started with LLC Masters where three teams owned by us. We did not sell those. We will not yes. sell those. India, Asia, Worlds, players play for the country. So yeah. that is when we first launched our IP, our product. And we wanted to build a test case for others, partners to come in. You know, So we started yeah. in Oman and uh, it was a great start in the middle of a third wave of COVID. Uh, yeah. No audience on ground, but it just helped on a television. So Sony was uh, was our partner. So it, it got a good start. And thereafter, we uh, had actually originally planned to do another LLC Masters, uh, but unfortunately or fortunately, we felt that uh, we could go ahead with our plans of launching the franchise because we have built the case and yeah. we got lucky with uh, our timelines. We had to bring it into India because of some uh, specific reasons uh, and uh, we, I think, is is here to stay. So we brought in our franchise, Adani's, GMR's, Manipal Group, Hilwara Group, all billion-dollar companies Fantastic. brought in our franchise. And that started the journey in September 20. Uh, two. Uh, so Dhani has for, for us we've done four seasons two of Masters two of the Legends League yep. cricket uh, it has been an onward uh, upwards trajectory in terms of viewership audience sponsorship revenue everything you know so on all counts uh, <clears throat> it's been it's been organic reasons yep. being uh, when I say organic uh, we haven't really spent the kind of money that a consumer brand would do on marketing Okay, And for me, my game has been that these legends are the players mm -hmm. who we've picked up have a huge following amongst themselves. Yes, And we utilize that, you know, so I do not really spend much on marketing, but on yeah. engagement, you know, so yeah. fan engagement with these cricketers who have millions of followers. So just to give you an indicator, 
the last season, uh, which we concluded about 120 players, has a combined social media reach of following of about 600 million plus. You know, so that wow. is my, my primary audience that I straight away target. Yeah. And then, of course, it just helps me build the case by viewership and all of that starts to do it. Of course. I have a very, very strong supporter in terms of Star Sports as my broadcast partner in India. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, as you mentioned about the World Cup, uh, we were originally scheduled to happen in September 23 between yeah. the Asia Cup and the World Cup. But Sanjog, right. who's, a, uh, who's a good alibi, as the head of Star Sports, he mentioned, yeah. you know, it'll be nice to take it up out, out next of the World Cup. Yeah. Because the window was too short and we would kind of get lost between Asia Cup and World Cup. True. But I had the same question as you mentioned about, you know, fatigue factor would, would mm. pop in after the World Cup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the research at their end says that there is a habit that fans <laughs> form. Uh, you know, 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. you want to watch this yeah, yeah, match yeah. every day. So the World Cup would make that habit and we could benefit out of that immediately Amazing. there. And which Amazing. we did. You know, so yes. essentially that's something which we have seen. Uh, our overall viewership has increased from there. Uh, per session time has increased. And uh, that's a good sign uh, in the early days of our existence. And see, we are not IPL. We are not even competing with the active cricket. We are complementing it. Yes. Uh, so uh, the way we position our businesses, there is IPL or there is international cricket, which is priced at an X amount, which is fairly at the higher side of, of these things. So, and then there is domestic cricket, which has virtually no taker. So I'm trying to position myself in the middle. So something which is, uh, cricket has an aspirational uh, thing for all the brands to use and yeah. uh, make a wider reach, but not everybody can have that kind of deep pocket. So, which is what we are trying to offer to the sponsor. So that helps mm -hmm. the sponsorship. So we built the case scientifically in terms yeah. of going the step-by-step uh, -step approach into first launching that uh, master space and then the franchise yes. uh, then building up uh, onto the fan engagements setting up a, mil a, a, a good reach uh, viewership uh, session time increasing so we're going organically on all of those counts which is helping us as build a business case and uh, shown that uh, two more franchises were added I could have done four given yeah. the interest but uh, reasons being that I would like my franchises to also break even early Mm -hmm. If I have a a, lar uh, a more uh, bigger uh, uh, franchise pool in terms of more, uh, six to eight, and of course the the uh, central pool is split between them, so a lesser pie will come in. So we are saying, mm -hmm. okay, let them first kind of uh, break even and then move to the next phase where we may add more franchise on that. So that's mm -hmm. been uh, our business case uh, for now. Uh, the last season has been fantastic when it comes to making a comparison to our previous India season, which was the yep. first franchise season. Uh, we've grown in terms of uh, all counts, viewership reach. Uh, in fact, uh, audience in ground, you know, so we realized that when we did our first season in India, we started from Eden Gardens, we went mm -hmm. to Lucknow, uh, Ikana, and then to Firosha Kotla. So these three cities had seen a lot of international cricket and continues to see it regularly. Correct. But then after the moment we moved into Bhuvneshwar, mm. then to Jodhpur, to Jaipur, which cities have seen lesser kind of international cricket, a lot of audience came into the stadiums. And that is something yeah. which we realized that we should target smaller towns instead of the towns which have seen Correct. more often the international crickets uh, or the IPLs. So this year we had strategized to only go to the B towns. Started yeah. from Ranchi, uh, Dehradun, Jammu, uh, you know, so that has been a wise zag and then finally ending yeah. at Surat. So of the five cities, uh, Vizag has seen international cricket, but not as much. Uh, unfortunately, it got rained off on those two days and uh, uh, rest of my cities were sold out, you know. So uh, Jammu saw cricket after 40 years. Uh, <laughs> Surat wow. has never seen international cricket. Uh, Dehradun has not seen uh, international cricket of this quality. Actually, no India cricket at all. So... Yeah. You know, it was fantastic audience uh, response. So these are some of those boxes that you tick. Yeah. Uh, sponsorship uh, goes up based on that yeah. because reach grows. So we've kind of uh, seen that all the boxes started taking in up last season. Uh, higher reach, more sponsors, more audience in the ground. What more else may you on for? No, and, and you're completely right. I mean, from a strategy point of view, it's fantastic because 
you're so right there is there is the need there's a scarcity of you know live cricket and and people are watching on television all the time and now suddenly you're bringing something uh, novel and something cool and 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 you have all these legends that everybody wants to watch uh, no uh, kudos kudos to you to you on the team i was of course following the league and i'm i i realized you know what apart from all the legends sharing on social and multiple things happening there were also parallel things happening which i think uh, something that you spoke about right there's so much of reach i i saw um, a post uh, with kapil dev playing golf with some of the the players uh, um, uh, playing in the league and that automatically had so much uh, such a large ripple effect because then people are i mean talking about it i think and and maybe you can uh, dive a little deeper on the digital side i mean how you saw that uh, um, really kind of take off and how how did you use uh, these i mean the legends in the best way possible to kind of get the reach that y'all that y'all actually did you know sure. so uh, you know i link it back to me calling myself a content industry professional uh, so for me uh, this is a content platform uh, that we have created and we must create sub platforms where more engagements can happen yeah these are legends but they're not playing active cricket anymore so they are seen very less on to the playing field or virtually none you know i'm the only platform where they're taking yep. the bat out or the ball again uh, so they do a lot of other things they do commentary they play golf they do alter uh, social stuff and that is something that we want to use you know so we we bring them on board those sides of their as well you know so we bring in some good commentators to be on the uh, com boxes talking about the legends you know so the commentators who are currently uh, uh, doing commentary for the active cricket come out of the commentary box and play here with me so if i'm got them going to be harbhajan rena you know yeah. so they come out and then they play so who takes in the space at the com box is another challenge you know we bring on mm. more bigger names you know newer names and all of that legends of course uh so we do that and and each one of those have their own followings and uh yeah. so that yeah. is something that we try to engage with creating content by themselves or yeah. partnering with influencers on social side you know so right. they are not right. into hardcore serious cricket yes of course this is serious cricket it's not fun cricket of course. but they have uh, uh free time you know so 20 days only five matches to play uh you know so they have four five days free so they can do golfing so in our previous season they went out snorkeling they went out okay, wow. desert uh, safari you know so all of that is content and we mm. create and then uh, influencers come on board partnership you know so they we do a lot of local uh, uh, influencers so last year we had about uh, curry tales coming on board you know talking about food you know with right. these legends who created a series so these are the ways that these these legends are currently seen so we carry that and then cricket and create multiple other sporting and then package it together so this is whole piece is content yeah and yeah. the moment you talk about content that becomes your biggest tool for marketing and that is uh, we have to do it and uh, 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 digital space is where this is mostly consumed not just that even the the gaming part of it you know so uh, it's something that we really take uh, a pride in in becoming only one of the third or one of the few cricket leagues which has the biggest uh, gaming platform like uh, dream to be doing the official fantasy you know so the nice. game rules which are created in in the uh, these platforms there's a lot of engagement you know so yeah. we have our nft partner as a radio so uh, experiences are being given with these fans so engagement happens behind the scenes as well a lot mm -hmm. of it which is not even visible to the world but Correct. is is also uh behind some closed doors and which is what kind of creates this ripple effect for helping us organically grow uh, the product you know so it's uh, as i said i did not carry the baggage of being a sports person being into this business yeah. i'm looking at it like content and that is what is helping us as an organization that we must carry on uh, producing content yeah. uh, more the content better the reach will be and that's the journey that uh, will carry on no super ban and and i mean honestly that's that's the right way to go because that's where it's all headed right in terms of personal brands in terms of i mean all the players all these people are talking directly to their fans and 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 why not uh, uh through uh, uh, 
uh, through through a league and 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 I mean playing sport as well. We're 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 reaching uh, close to the end. I'm going to focus on just two things. One is uh, sponsors. You know, uh, I know you mentioned, of course, IPL is right at the top. Uh, so how do you kind of b- bring in sponsors right in the middle? Also explain to them. One is it's a much shorter league. Yes, it's cricket. And yes, you have legends, but I I think expectations also have to be kind of managed. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I I guess you gotta you gotta ask for a a, a certain fee as well because uh, the sports business runs on uh, on money. Uh, so yeah, tell us a little bit of, about the sponsorship side and and maybe some anecdotes uh, from from your last season. Yeah, so uh, you know we established ourselves as the second most watched and highest rated cricket league in India. After IPL, uh, no other T Twenty league anywhere in the world being consumed in India comes even close to us. You know, so we are five times, seven times higher than any of the big bash, or because we targeted ourselves to an India market, Super. and that is something that we have focused on in terms of commercializing this particular uh, property, Excellent. regionalizing it in terms of marketing it to regional audiences, so that we are able to create a. a a platform where aspirational brands who cannot afford the top side of the cricket, whether IPL or India international cricket, uh, but still has aspiration to pick up. And I have legends in the faces who are very highly recognized and respected. So uh, yep. they are able to kind of sample it, you know. So from our season one mm-hmm. to this particular season, we have moved from being a one single or two two brands journey to more than 13 brands in this uh, last season. Wow. So that is something which has uh, not been just off the uh, thing. We've gradually moved into it. And yes. the idea was that, of course, at two parallel counts, one, target the cricket spenders who are uh, not at the top of the, the table, yes. uh, which is the likes of, let's say, uh, Tata or, uh, uh, you know, Vivo or, you know, so they've been on yep. that side. Target the smaller players, you know, so we've we've kind of uh, uh, kept ourselves on that. And two, bring in newer uh, brands who has an aspiration to pick up on cricket yep. and has a competing, uh, similar, same industry brand already doing cricket. Mm-hmm. But we would uh, offer them something which is unique. You know, so we have done both of it. So whether it is Qatar Airways, Emirates is a is a brand which works with ICC and and done that. Yeah. Uh, so we worked at uh, Qatar Airways. They they partnered with us in uh, the Doha season. Of course, it was local uh, for them, but then they've carried on yeah. and was part of the India season as well. So that has been. Awesome. <clears throat> now they've tasted it, and we are. What started as one single season deals now are getting into multiple season deals, Fantastic. which is what uh, we want them to do. You know, so sample the product, and then if they see merit, I would expect them to do long term deals. So we brought in some new brands. Uh, uh, you know, surrogates uh, have started to come in, and of course, uh, it is about return on these investments for them. You know, yeah. what is that wider reach? So I have to ensure that I not only uh, uh, give them what is benefiting, what is normally a benefit that cricket offers, but also something new, you know, so, which is why we talk about the smaller content marketing, which the international cricket or IPL or India cricket may not be able to offer yep. because we do not have access to that kind of uh, content creation with the players. We do yep. that, you know, so uh, we have that, you know, so what I was saying, uh, the golf, for example, now, yep. Uh, you can't expect the active cricketers to play golf in the middle of the series, <laughs> but they do that with us, you know. So in that case, another set of brands can be brought in only for that particular category. So that's basically how we have been able to do that. Uh, in the past, we've done some tourism, uh, you know. So so Qatar tourism happened where we did the dune bashing and and uh, desert safaris with these nice. cricketers was specifically created as an integration for those tourism brands. Even in Oman, we had uh, Oman tourism coming on board. Now we are targeting uh, this future. We will be looking at even the domestic uh, tourism uh, platforms or uh, 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 state tourism boards to also come on. Jammu and Kashmir tourism came in with us as a sponsor, you know, while we were in the Jammu leg. So we are actually doing regional as well as national on both sides and has to be very specifically 
tuned in to that particular requirement of that particular brand. Okay. That's a leverage that we have because we are uh, offering cricket in a unique style, unlike what international or IPL cricket uh, would yeah. be. No, that's that's awesome, and and then exactly i mean and it's superb that you can actually do that you know i mean cater for national but at the same time figure out who your regional sponsors can be and and kind of what activations they can do and and gives you guys also that much more reach and and leeway to play around uh, superb super love love the model last one what what is the future hold uh, what are we going to see um maybe different cities maybe different format i don't know just uh, maybe lay, laid out a little bit for us yeah, so uh, we will carry on doing both the formats of ours LLC Masters now, which is scheduled to happen in Doha uh, in the February, March. Uh, we'll be soon be announcing the dates for that. Awesome. That will carry on uh, for the next three years in Doha. We've signed up with Qatar Cricket, who is our host Excellent. for that, that uh, product. And then the domestic season, which again is going to come back to his original window of September, October 24th, mm -hmm. uh, we will have. Uh, we've identified that uh, strategy of ours worked uh, going to smaller towns. So yep. we will continue to go to smaller towns. We'll definitely pick up uh, two or three towns where we have previously visited uh, and we'll add two more towns. So from a five city, that is something that we'll do. Also important is to create a pool of players, which is what keeps this going. You know, So these are cricketers who are coming to a certain age who may not be able to offer physically competitive cricket beyond a certain point you know so in that case our pool has to be right so we keep doing our targeting in terms of who are the next ones to bring yeah. on board so i'm already working on multiple uh, uh, players who are at the at the uh, you know uh, verge of uh, moving on from active cricket and then joining us in fact we've been lucky that some of those cricketers are now resigning to uh, actually uh, you know taking retirements to join us, Aaron Finch nice. did that, Martin Guptill did that, you know, yeah. so multiple such cricketers are now going to be coming forward even from India, uh, you know, so we are targeting that. So that also are, is a good feature plan in terms of bringing in all the top names and make Legends League cricket as the natural second choice, second innings for these cricketers post-retirement. So that's the way we are positioning ourselves. Cool. Make this as a natural second innings for those cricketers. Amazing, and and what better place to do it than India? You know, <laughs> I mean, there's there's no no two ways about it. Uh, Raman, this has been fantastic. I really love the insights. Really love the honesty, and and you also jumping into a little bit of your early journey. For all our listeners, uh, do follow Raman on LinkedIn. He has a, a newsletter as well uh, that he puts out uh, excellent uh, uh, content. Uh, so Raman, thank you for the time. Really appreciate uh, you spending time with us and all the best for what's to come. Pleasure is all mine. Thank you so much for having me here, Arup. It'll be good to connect again in the future as well. Thank you. Thank you.